Yeah, you say that whereas impeachments are part and parcel of democracy. Correct. Um, Positively the, or negatively. Yes. The question I asked is, today is the 9th of May. 29th Correct. of May, there will be a handover. Suddenly, we look right, impeachment. We look left, impeachment. I mean, can't we just let things just, you know, trot along until 20, the 29th of May? You, you, so many boats are being rocked at this time. Before you ask that question, right, or before you answer that question, you need to also ask yourself, why were all these teams looking glued together until these dying days of their leadership. So what is the reason? Fine and simple. <laughs> if you look at it, uh, there have been cases of traitors and betrayers. I, I'm, I'm serious. There have been cases of traitors and betrayers. Because when you talk about giving the dividends of governance, not only democracy, because there are some governments that are not democracies, but they are giving dividends of leadership. When you talk about giving that dividends, there is every possibility that people just congregated there without an agreed ideology on how to lead their people. And at some point, maybe based on the understanding that they had negatively, you know, maybe the parks or things have fallen apart and there are blame games. And the only way I will show this person or teach him a lesson or to let him understand that I wasn't really part of him is by embarking on what I can say, public show of vengeance, emasculation, or whatever. That's left to the Nigerian parliament to decide. But also, towards the end of this, because I saw the Nigerian constitution with him and he is the learned person, we need to do something between you and me about the Nigerian constitution. Certain things should be definitive. Because I had him talking about gross misconduct. Mm -hmm. Gross misconduct must it? be defined. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody to just tell me uh, uh, section 188, subsection 1, 2, 3 to 11 said A, B, C, D. What is gross misconduct? Tell me in A and B and C language. I'm not saying I want to contest the interpretation of Nigerian constitution mm -hmm. to those who are learned. But by the time you hand it over to me, you know, whether it is translated into my language, his language, the fisherman's language, the Ketu Riala's language, if, if the definition of gross misconduct is A, B, C, D, I should be able to understand that plain language. What I don't like is a situation where somebody will say, hey, Bala, you, you are just talking because of your Dundee brain. That is not the meaning of impeachment or gross misconduct. That has to be made clear. And just quickly, you see, something is happening currently in, in, in the African continent. And it's still linked to, to, to Barista, not him in particular, but the lawyers and the constitution. Mm -hmm. There is a country currently in Africa where the president is doing everything to seek a third term. Everybody from the lowest person in the village to most educated person, though not learned, know that he is not entitled to a third term. When they came out to protest, do you know what the judiciary did? The judiciary said that president is entitled to a third term. And between the last two weeks and today, more than 100 people have been killed in that country. And you know the ambiguity is just because the Constitution was looking completely opaque and blood to everybody. But everybody in the country knew that this man was never supposed to be, I mean, clamoring for a third gotcha. term. So one thing that needs to assist us, because by the time you have these lawmakers, the executive, and in particular the judiciaries, clashing like this. I should be able to go and read this constitution. What did this constitution say? OK, Let, Chief Chiku, the word impeach doesn't necessarily mean removal. It just means an accusation or an indictment that may not necessarily lead to a removal. So why are, we, why are the politicians so afraid to hear the word impeach? You see, It baffles me because if I'm sure and confident of myself, 
I will not be bothered. When I served as a commissioner, I was the only commissioner that returned the official vehicle back to government and rejected every piece of land offered to me by the government. And that was why I was able to say no. Your Excellency, I will not approve payment for a second-hand computer. And I said, you can take me to EFCC. So it borders on morality, conscience, and of course, background. Like my co-discussant said, the purpose for which you were appointed, as soon as I was informed about my appointment, I said, yes, excellent, provided you give me a free hand, because I know where I'm coming from. My late father will always tell you, please, remember my name. And we are conscious of this. Fortunately, I come from a family of lawyers. We are four, six boys, three girls, the same mother, the same father. My junior is a professor of law. He teaches in Nigerian law school. My senior is a very senior lawyer. 34 years at the bar. So we're always very conscious of this. Like you said, there are some lacunas in our constitution. But in the interim, the one we have, we operate it as it is. Gross misconduct was not defined. They only said, in the opinion of the House. That's a very big problem. But so the House is left to determine anything that they consider they as gross, gross misconduct. misconduct. So it's an open-ended something. But you and I have conscience. Only myself can tell myself the truth. And when I left the government, I challenged all the commissioners that served alongside with me. Challenged the governor. And throw light on what has happened in your ministry. By the time I left government, I hadn't talked to 3,000 Naira in my bank account. There is life after power. But, but you, you were earning a salary. Of course I do. And you'll be surprised to hear this. As soon as I refused that payment, they stopped my salary. And I was still serving as a commissioner. I said I was detained at State CID as a serving commissioner by my governor. And I happened to come from the same place with him. I said, Your Excellency, you cannot continue like this. People are looking at us. Even with, even, don't mind the fact that we are from the same place. I owe it a duty to tell you the truth. Part of the problem we have, again, is that some public officials, commissioners, special advisor, special assistant, they only tell the leader what he wants to hear. Most of them are very afraid of losing their job. And I've always, I remember I always tell my government, I came from somewhere, I had something to you. Security, fear of security of tenure, fear of the unknown, what will happen? I remember one commissioner called me and said, they raised the issue of severance allowance before the government. I said it was not going to pay. So you can see that people are after what they will get. Not even what the poor people. There was a day I raised before my governor. Look, the nurses at Parkley, they're about embarking on strike. You say, it's that part of your duty. I say, Your Excellency, you, we have to pay these people at the end of the month. Look at even the minimum wage. 18,000 naira. And look at the first scarcity. Mm. You are paying somebody 18,000 naira. He pays house rent from that money, feeds his children, clothes them, go to hospital. How much is left? And yet, many governments cannot pay that 18,000 naira. Where lies the morals and the conscience? Uh, Chief, mm. we really have to. Uh, Bala, your last closing statement, please. Well, I, I, I don't expect a perfect government. I expect a realistic government. But one thing from the discussions, from what uh, the barrister has said, I think uh, 
it's becoming clear that even people, the appointees that accept appointments, don't go there because they are technocrats and needed to add value to the value chain. Because if truly somebody was doing something and he got co-opted as a lieutenant, the lieutenant simply means you are coming to add value. And you, that person that was trying to engage your services or employ you, at the end of you belong to the same state. But if truly you are a technocrat or somebody that was going to be adding value and that person got you co-opted, he will listen to you. I'm not, we're not saying you wouldn't have skirmishes along the line, but you will be able to mend things in your state interest and by extension, national interest. Okay, your last word. In one sentence, please. There is life after power. And I'm calling on all the clergy in Enugu State. The former Senate President, His Excellency, Senator Kenan Naman. The present Deputy Senate President, His Excellency, Chief Ike Puramata. The former Governor, Chief Jim Mwoboda, and former Senator. Of course, former Governor of all the Enugu State, Chief Opasileze Mwodo, His Excellency. The Catholic bishops have made moves. This is the time for them to speak up. Call both parties and initiate a peace. Okay. And restore peace in that state. Okay. Because history and posterity will hold them responsible. Okay, thank you very much. We have been chatting with Chief Loki Chuku, a legal practitioner, as well as Balazaka, a social commentator. Thank you very much for coming this Thank morning. Thank you for having me on this program. Where we shall return in just a moment with yet another very interesting conversation. Please stay with us.